Hello everybody and welcome back to another horror games tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you how to create a physics based object that the player has to pick up and take with them. You then place it on like a pedestal or some kind of mechanism. It detects that you've placed this onto the mechanism or in the relative vicinity of where it needs to be placed which will then enable you to walk through uh, a gate, a door, um, anything that you want to animate. So this is something that we can we can use in multiple ways. It doesn't have to be this setup, but it's just to give you an idea of how to how this works and how to set it up in your games. So if you watched the previous video, which was my um, pick up and throw physics based objects, this is advancing further on that and how you can use the um, physics based objects to be uh, used like keys or key cards or to unlock things or lock things or you know to trigger events so I'll show you how this works and then I will show you how to create it so we can see here that we have a locked gate in a sense and this is where we need to place an object so it could be a vase it could be anything you like in your horror games um, or puzzle game um, so the player has to pick up this object and take the object with him and then when we place it in the area it will then open the gate for us <coughs> now there's not a lot going on here to be quite honest it's actually very simple to make if we remove the object then the gate will close so all this is is really is just a simple blueprint actor a trigger and an animation on the gate so the trigger detects the blueprint actor overlaps and then it triggers the animation so let's show you how to create this so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our blueprint actor <coughs> which is I've named this the collision key just so we have an idea of what it's doing so we're going to right click blueprint class create an actor uh, collision key test and then we're going to open that up <coughs> excuse me um, in here all we have to do is just give it basically a, a body or create an object so we go to add and then go to static mesh you can either do it here or you can just test your code by just using one of the default shapes so I'm just going to add a cube I'm going to bring its size down and then I'm going to bring it slightly up so it doesn't clip through objects when placed in the scene I'm going to compile that and that's done all we have to do there is make sure that simulate physics is on so with our cube or our object highlighted here we go to simulate physics mass and then compile it and it's finished so we close that and then in our level so so these are just objects these have no relative importance these are just static meshes there's nothing else in here that requires any kind of code or blueprints this is just a static mesh with a texture and we're going to animate it so it moves up so if you go into your uh, mezzanine which is your level sequencer and we go to add level sequence so I'll delete this and then I'll recreate it so add level sequence hit door <coughs> and then we're going to highlight the gate that we want to move so we will know it we want to move it on the Z axis because we want to go up and down so we're going to highlight it, go to track, add it to sequencer, add, and then we're going to open up our transform. We're going to get rid of scale and rotation. So highlight them, press the delete key. And then we know that we only want the Z, which is up and down. So we're going to get rid of X and Y, press the delete key. So this is our default position, which is closed. So we click the plus button. So add a keyframe and then we want it to open over a duration of I'd say six or seven seconds so we type seven here it will move our next marker to seven, the position of 
the, the seven second position on the timeline, I'm going to drag our end flag, the red one, to just after that seven second marker. And then I'm going to click on our door or gate. We're going to drag that to where we want it to finish. At the seven second mark, which is about here. And then I'm going to click on add key, which is this one. So now if we move, the if we drag our uh, timeline marker to zero to seven, we'll see that it's animated that door or the gate to move up and back down. So if we click the space bar to play, we can see that over a course of seven seconds, our gate will open. There we go. I'm going to click save. So you can add a sound here if you'd like. <coughs> which would be uh, audio track but I always find that adding a track here means that you're kind of stuck with having the open sound effect play um, and then it won't play anything in reverse so when it closes it will be silent so it's usually best to add that into your level blueprint if you're going to use it in your level blueprint so we're going to click save and close our sequencer so now we should have somewhere in our scene we should have there it is usually puts it in a strange place a little level sequencer movie or animation thing so what we do now is we go into our level blueprint so we're going to open it up and you can see that i've already done that code so i'm going to show you how to do that now so let's delete this and then we're gonna go and add a trigger. So let's get rid of that. So up here, I'm gonna quickly add to the project, all classes, and then type T-R-I-G-G -G for trigger. I'm gonna get a trigger box. And we're gonna set it into correct position. So we're gonna highlight whatever stand you're may you may be using. It could be a table, could be a switch, could be a little hole in the wall wherever you're going to be placing your actor you're going to place this trigger so i'm going to get the current location values for this so that'll be here location i'm going to right click copy i'm going to highlight my trigger box right click paste and then i'm going to resize it so bear with me one second so once we've resized that and we've repositioned it, we're going to go into our level blueprint. So we go back into our level blueprint. So if you don't know how to open that, it's just here and then just here, level blueprint. So we're going to open that up. With the trigger box highlighted, we're going to right click, add event, add collision, add on actor, begin over that because we've created a blueprint actor we can now call that actor that we've created. We're also going to right click, add event, collision, on actor, end overlap, which is this one. And then in here, so we need to know we've named it. So we named it uh, collision key. So we're going to get our, so actually I'll use, Get rid of this one and use the one that I created, which would be that one. So we're going to go into our level blueprint and we're going to come and drag out of our trigger box. I'm going to get um, cast, oops, cast to collision key is the unknown man collision key test. So we get collision key and then it'll be this one. And then whatever you named yours you want to get the same so you're going to cast two and then the name of the object or the actor that you created out of other actor oops out of other actor we're going to connect that into object and then we're going to highlight this Control c to copy and then Control v to paste and then we're going to drop that in there connect other actor into object on the end overlap <coughs> okay now we want a slight delay. We don't want the gate to instantly open the moment the player pl puts it on the uh, 
the stand or whatever it is that you want to call yours pedestal stand um, we're gonna get a hold D for a delay and left click or you can right click and then type in delay and uh, we're gonna drag out of the cast to on your begin overlap into the delay I'm gonna set this to three seconds and then minimizing your level blueprint we're gonna go into <coughs> excuse me into our uh, scene we're going to highlight our mezzanine or level sequencer which is what we just created with the gate and then we're going to go back into our level blueprint right click create reference and then drag out of the pin on what we've just added in and then we're going to get play p l a y for play sequence player let's tidy this up a little bit just like that drag that into there so this will now detect the objects in the right space as long as the player holds it or places it within that three second period and it's still within this box then it will play the animation that we created for our gate so we're going to left click on the uh, gate door and control C control V and then we're going to drag out of this and just type in reverse so reverse just like this and then we're going to get this one play reverse let's tidy this up and then we're going to drag that to here and then out of our end overlap we're going to pop that into there so it should go on at to end overlap cast to collision key and then into play reverse and then again, the same for, for the begin overlap is when we're opening and the end overlap is when it's going to close. So on at to begin overlap, we're going to cast to the actor that we created, which is our collision key. Um, and then the delay is going to be three seconds. After three seconds, if the object is still within that trigger box, then it's going to play the movie scene. <coughs> Compile. And then in to our scene so in the previous video I created um, a tutorial based on physics objects how to pick up move around with an object and then when you let go of right mouse button you can throw it um, so that's relevant to this video and that's the idea the idea behind doing the last one was so I could show you how to utilize physics based objects in to your games for puzzles so with our actor in our scene that we've just created and placed um, with the code in place we can pick up the object and move that around and if we if we spin it and then let go we can also throw it so um, so go back into the game sorry so what we do is we pick that up and we can so you can imagine in a horror game or puzzle horror game or psychological thriller you've got a vase or an object a unique object like an amulet or something that you want to place on something to open something in a sense so a way to complete a puzzle so we're going to pick this up the player's going to carry it around and then place it in the correct spot which then will trigger the animation and then the gate will open it never usually goes as smooth as this um, but yeah, so that's going to be it for this video. Oh, yeah, so what we forgot to do, what I forgot to do, is on your um, animation, the level sequencer, you, you're going to get the animation snapped back to its original state. So this is the start state, and then the end state should be when it's open. So what we need to do is make sure we check pause at end. So that basically means that when this overlaps the trigger box what will happen is when the animation finishes playing after that seven seconds it will just go back to the beginning and it will reclose the gate to stop that from happening we left click on our level sequencer and then check pause at end so when it finishes that animation at seven seconds it will just keep the gate open so i'll show you the difference so we grab our puzzle key we drop that onto the pedestal and then the gate will open 
and it won't snap back to the start it will just stay open so now let's say we take this off and then it will close so there you have it <coughs> so it's a quick little side note as well it, I've noticed um, a couple of people have had issues with the code in the previous video for the physics um, pick up and put down code in your first person blueprint so I'll we'll quickly go over that now uh, so we're going to go into our first person blueprints open that up and as you can see here the physics the grab we have a physics handle which basically means it acts like the player's hands it can grab and move around objects um, so down here if you ever end up with uh, a multiplier that looks like this um, you need to make sure so if your code didn't look how mine looked make sure that your get world location is plugged into the a value and your multiply is plugged into the b value on your vector for your addition node so when it comes out of get forward vector if it looks like this then you need to right click so highlight it just like this so you're going to right click go to convert pin and then just check float single position and you can put your value in there then compile and save so it should be like this so if you've had that problem or that issue that's a quick simple fix on how to resolve that problem so yeah thanks for watching this video guys and um, if you've got any questions about how to, how it works or you need any more help just let me know in the comments I'll link the previous video in the comment section and in the uh, description for this video too um yeah so i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching uh like share and subscribe if you can to help the channel grow bye bye for now